Hello? Is this thing on? I'm a bit worried about this thing now. So yesterday I realized and I guess figured out from talking to people that the old rocket booster trick doesn't work anymore. Specifically, it doesn't work for shifting the mass. So you used to be able to put a heavy rocket booster down low and a light booster up high. And that would minus mass from here. The up high would minus mass from that specific point, And the heavy would add mass to that specific point. Now the rocket booster just changes the weight overall. It's not dependent on where it is. So I could put the rocket booster down in the bottom and have it negative mass. Now this hull pretty much relied on there being a lot of heavy weight down the bottom and a lot of negative mass up high. And it's just going to do this. One option I had thought about, I might actually be able to do this with pivots. If I use this, then I can maybe put some weight all along the bottom and have it fold out as little fins. But I don't know if that's enough weight. Doesn't look like it. So let's say I use this thing just to test. This is the, the thing that doesn't work anymore, where it was a negative booster on top and a positive booster on the bottom. The negative booster will still remove mass. It just doesn't matter where it's located anymore. So if I slap them, put them all over the top here like this, it should float away. Hmm, actually, that's working. Why is that working? So I guess there is weight in the bottom, and now the mass is just very low. So if I can put more mass down low, I should just be able to add a lot of negative weight somewhere, and then reduce the mass a lot. Oh, it's because I still have these on here, though. I really don't want to have fins that fold out from the bottom. So this is just negative mass. It's not too bad, actually. So I may need to turn this whole piece through here into barrels, which only... And then I'll figure out where the middle point is and do one stretched block to hide all of it. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is probably not a good number. Hmm... It's going to take a probably an active stabilizer to get it right. This very back wall, perhaps. Hmm. <laughs> I don't really have any space. I was thinking I'd be able to put a sliding system in somewhere, but the wall doesn't even go past the middle point, so it would only be able to stabilize the wrong way. So I just need a lot of weight on one side. I might have to figure that one out later. Today I can just focus on getting the interior working and getting the system here working. This is the engine control. So I wanted to have it so you flick this key and then that's what turns all this on rather than being on an instrument panel. And then I don't know what these big dials would be. Maybe like, oh I've already labeled them. Steam pressure and boiler temperature. 130. I probably need this to go to like 150 or 200 even. And then I think for these, have I labeled these? No. So these can just be anything. I don't think those colors are correct at all. Wow, that's like impossible to see. Bring it back to the desert so that it's easy to deal with. I know it floats. I know it's basically gonna work. Man, that panel is not nice though. I wonder if I should lift this whole thing up one. Yeah, that's okay. So yeah, I don't know what to do about this little door. Perhaps just the panel needs to change, right? So it's like not the wall section, it's only the control panel area. Because I have all the right colors for this. 
Right, so I think this is what we're going to have. So this light up here, boiler status, that is going to be like off when the system's off. Then it will turn on and go maybe like yellow while it's heating up. And then once the boiler is over 100 degrees, it'll go green. And then if the boiler goes over 150 degrees, it'll go red. Then we have steam pressure, which is just coming off the boiler. So I can actually just connect these ones straight away. And then boiler temp. And then this is going to be like an emergency shut off. I think I'll leave it there. So the key will ignite and then the button will flip open if the boiler pressure goes above three, let's say. So here we've got zero to three. If it goes above three, this flips open. And if you push this, then this will turn off that, turn off the key. So the button turns off the key. And then that's, that's a pretty straightforward way to cut it. You have to push the button, I think. I think that would work. Man, how am I gonna test that? Unlock. So I'm gonna put a toggle button here and this will be simulating. This button simulates a boiler over pressure. So let's say this is on. Boiler's over pressure. You have to come down here and push that and then it will turn this off. Hmm. It's weird that you can just turn it straight back on again though. Is that intended functionality? I would have thought if this is on, sending an on signal to this, the key can't be turned back on. Uh, well, whatever. I'll say that this button not only turns the key off, it will, maybe there'll be like a release valve and it'll just dump all the steam. Hmm, it seems kind of unnecessary. But anyway, we've got furnace temperature on the small one, fuel level and condenser temperature. So it's just a bunch of temperatures, really. <laughs> this is an FCU furnace control unit. So we have the key. You should be able to grab this logic for starting everything. Merge all those other controllers in. So we need furnace fuel level and we need fuel pump. And then the other start everything actually controls the engine in which we need the fur furnace temperature and the air valve. Man, I thought this was gonna be a lot bigger. It will be a lot bigger because there's a lot more logic being put into it now. It's like everything that controls my furnace. Oh, I have another one, furnace ignition, which is connected to the key, I think. And then inside of this, I also need the status light, which is for the boiler specifically, boiler status light. And to measure that, I need to know the Boiler temperature, furnace temperature, fuel level, condenser temperature. So just based off the boiler temperature, I'm gonna control the status light. And we'll do that with a bunch of thresholds, I think. That'd be the easiest way. So if it's anything from like negative 999 to 99, then that controls a switch box, which sends a constant on number, which is gonna be the color of the hue. If I send it nothing, it will turn, it'll stay off. So this off here where it's not connected to anything is technically nothing. But then I also need to give it saturation and value. This might not be the best way to do it because I need to have a bunch of switch boxes. So let's say 100 to 150, 140. I think it gets up to 140, so I'm gonna say 150. That would change the hue over to green. 120, and then the off can be to there. <laughs> can already see this getting real out of hand, like going through three switch boxes. I'm going to say the low threshold is 151 and the high threshold is, 
it will never get up to 9999. The number for that will be 0, which doesn't need to go through any of that at all. And then I think I can just send it back into the next switch box. So does this work? If the threshold is between 99, if it's between like 0 and 99, then send an on signal of 57, which is yellow. Send that into the off and send it into this off because those are both off. And then send it through to the composite right. Then, if the threshold is between 100 and 150, turn it on. So then it will be sending this signal instead. Yeah, and that makes sense. It should be sending the next signal up. And then I think it's just a case of writing out the next three. It's just normal numbers. So it was furnace temperature, fuel level, and condenser temperature. It's all upside down. Chuck that in there. Nice, easy to read, spaced out correctly. So boiler status light is the RGB light. The FCU panel is that uh, little instrument panel there. That's an HSV mode. We have furnace temperature. Key. Okay, that's all connected. Engine control done. And I'll probably be able to put a shut off in the um, bridge cabin cockpit area as well. Now I'm wondering about the roof because I've got a lot of pipes and lights and things in here. Am I going to be able to put any kind of this metal plating up here or is it just going to not work at all? So first I'll start by at least painting the floor. Hmm, I might paint in here the same colour as the deck. I want to do the deck in grey because... Maybe not this grey, maybe a lighter grey than that. Uh, maybe I should do it in this grey. I don't want to do it in green though. Probably come back and put a lot of that texture in with like slightly off by five points of grey. And get me a bit of wear and tear. Oh yeah, I need to do the top of that. Yeah, I think grey is good. Grey will be okay. And then that'll mean the inside of the cargo I think should be grey because it's like it's like connected to the outside. I'm not gonna be too fussy about getting under those boxes. And then inside the condenser room will be grey. Back to panelling. I think it would be good to just grab a panel here that looks like it's all complete like this one is basically a complete panel i think the first one i did will be complete take this go up and find a spot to start putting these i don't think there needs to be anything in here you know like it doesn't need doesn't need anything on the wall this room's got the boxes now so it doesn't need anything extra in here maybe a bench would be good here, or actually some equipment. Equipment could be really good to just shove into this spot. I mean, I haven't put the diving gear or anything out in any anywhere on the deck, and this would be a good place to come and grab it. So I'm specifically thinking like an underwater pit type of situation here. So I'm gonna move the welders across, put the diving gear in the middle, Spear gun on the end, and then spear gun ammo at the very end. It'd be good if I could merge this somehow. If I could get a wedge in here. How would you get a wedge into there? Like that, I suppose. Yep, exactly like that. So you paint that yellow and that yellow, and then stretch those two pieces. A bit like that. Paint it all up. Uh, I could have maybe done a two wide wedge, one by two wedge across. Also, that's going to be a pain in the ass to grab the top of that now. I need this one anyway, like the, the one by four. Get rid of that and then paint the top and bottom of this 
little cabinet thing. And this will need a HUD to make it look like all the other ones. Which will be seven across. What about a two? Oh no, my lights. <laughs> yeah, I think that works really well. Probably the side of it could be dark grey to match like the top. And I've got a little HUD under there as well, which you can't really see. But if you did happen to look, it would look supported like everything else. Also, why is that empty? Oh, I picked it up. So yeah, this is all your underwater equipment for repair. Because that's kind of what this ship is. It's meant to be for like recovering anchors and shark cages and stuff. So you're going to be going underwater a bit. And having all of this stuff just here makes quite a lot of sense. Yeah, I don't think I need anything else in here. I just need to put some panels down in the floor. <laughs> this is going to be a fun game. So the light goes through here, which means I might do another grey panel that can't be removed. Is there anything in here? That would be the thing. Okay, here's the plan. The whole hatch. The whole hatch is going grey. I think the top of it will have to be a white handle then. I don't know if I can get two different coloured handles. Hmm, can I get two different no mm. uh. okay so that is a panel <laughs> it's a big panel Yeah, no, that looks cool. I think up here it might need to do a curve or something. But it kind of helps explain why all the colour is situated in one area. I could just go straight across. Which is probably the more, like, easier thing to sell. I could even try putting some corners on the edges there. But I think I'll leave it like that. And then what I can do with some of these internal sections as well is put like scuff marks or more rivets and things so it looks like it's maybe all connected. And then I think I'm going to have to try and, yeah, I'm going to put paint in there as well. This is such an expensive boat just purely from painting. Okay, this is about as done as I can get it. I can't put anything in here because this section is wedges on the underside and then there's like a fluid meter in here and that's more wedges. Probably could do some little cutout pieces inside this big grey chunk. And then perhaps I should shorten this bit that's in front of the door so it kind of is only as wide as the door. I think probably this room is okay like this maybe you need something to cover up the gap between the boiler and the furnace mm, i don't think i need anything in here it would be like more a similar similar pattern or whatever i end up doing on the deck where it's maybe just smudges and different shades of gray in here i'm gonna leave this one out because i think i can use the space below here for something else like if if something pops up where i need another pump or something I can put it in there now going up I'm guessing this top deck will have to be grey as well and then inside can be light grey and there's no light in here I 
I'm going to leave the grey edge off the bottom up on this deck because then I would have to bring up a wedge of it all the way up here and that's kind of kind of nasty looking. I don't think that would be very good. Now the floor in here needs to be this. Hmm. Wait, should the floor in here be grey or should it be carpeted? Probably should be grey, don't you think? Maybe like uh, a section of it should be grey. It'd be nice to put a seat in here and not like a helm. I was thinking there could be like a carpeted section where you would be standing, but it would probably make more sense for it to be like on the side if it's going to be anywhere in here. I've just noticed this little cutout on the side is actually the right size to put a seat in here. So maybe I could put like a, a resting seat sort of thing. You can, it could even go this way to be honest. And then you would get a little armrest. I don't know what I could put in here. It's very open. It would probably be quite good if it was not open. I think if I did a door, it could look quite nice. And I would need to stretch this one. Yeah, that's heaps better. I think it could even come down the side here. That would make more sense. We've got the little display. This all works. Oh, that player sensor can't detect back here. I don't think I need anything up here, but maybe putting some equipment would be good. Just the little ones. Just one, maybe? Or if I turn them sideways. Hmm. Maybe if they're actually in the wall. But then you can access them from behind. I'm just going to put one there and I'll put the night vision binoculars in it. That way if you happen to be looking out the back and you need them. I wonder if you can even get them there though. They might be too far behind you. Oh yeah. See I think this could be useful. There could even be a space for instrument panels. Depending on what I need. If I can get, If I can't get anything on the display up here. Then I think what I'd do is hide a pivot in the wall somewhere. And then pivot that down so it matches the slope of this inverse pyramid. I'll just leave that there so I know I had the idea. What if I use this locker as like a template? And that would give it more, more credibility that it's not just a one-off crazy part. It's like it's been used a couple of times on the ship. Huh, I could actually just chuck the locker there. I was thinking maybe it'd make more sense if it were its own cabinet, like a, a low one, and then you could even put a big display on top of that. What do you think? That seems a little bit not quite right. I think this would just like carry on, and then maybe that very abrupt how it stops but then I would want this to be across one more so you don't have that kind of gap my idea is that you you'd be driving your boat and then you want to just like leave it for a while you come look at this and this can be a big interactive map zoom in zoom out figure out where you are and then go back to this I don't know that seems seems not so useful what if I just have some painted lockers and then it helps fill in that gap a little bit. It nearly fits three lockers. <laughs> uh, that's silly. Why would you have three? Let's go with two. And then I think, yeah, doing that's okay. Right? That's not bad. And I think I'll chuck a seat in here, which would be... Like that, I'll just fill it in the whole way. And I'll use the same yellow as what's down here. Be consistent. But this one's going to be like a bit of a higher back seat. And it's going to have an armrest. Mm, it's a bit goofy how that just suddenly goes in into the side here. Oh well, it should be okay. 
Wait, that's already on. Why is that on? There's a gap in here somewhere. Otherwise, the player sensor wouldn't be detecting me. It's a gap. Where is the gap? Oh, that could be negatively affecting my buoyancy. A gap. A gap, a gap, a gap. It's not in here, is it? I thought I fixed that. Doesn't that count as being fixed? This... Mm, I bet because this fluid port is stretched, it's not blocking everything off. All right, if I just get rid of that, go with a solid piece. Hopefully it's all sealed up now. Yeah, okay. That could have been like a main cause of why it was rolling. Because there's a lot of weight up high and no buoyancy up high. And the reason I did that, why did I do that? I think I did it just for looks, right? It was just so that I could have a long fluid port across here. I'm going to go makeshift fluid port. So I wonder what this does in water then. It doesn't look like it's changed too much from what it was doing before. Just tilting. Tilting very heavily in the way I wouldn't think. I th would have thought it would have gone more to the left because the boiler and the furnace are here. On the sort of, I mean, they're quite central, but they're more on the left side. <laughs> so flick that key on. They'll start the boiler. See the furnace temperature is going stabilizing, it's going down, so it should come to about 138. Engine room. I think I can probably tweak the pistons because they don't seem like they're getting much pressure, or I can maybe I need to pump the steam a little bit differently. <laughs> what is this? I wonder if there's so much negative mass. Hmm. Is there so much negative mass that it's made it like crazy point? It's probably just too light. Remember how I said it was sitting too low in the water? Now it's sitting way too high. It's got to be those, right? It's got to be those rockets on the roof. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> with those rockets on the roof, it stays upright, but without them, it stays upright, but it's too high out of the water, and then without them, it just rolls. I've got to stop thinking of how it used to work, because it's not creating negative mass at the top anymore. It's just... This is changing the overall mass. So realistically I shouldn't have those and I shouldn't have this. Should be no barrels along the bottom, should be no negative mass anywhere on the top. Yeah, I think this boat could be toast. Just because it's not Yeah, I've got no exploits to keep its weird shape upright. Man, even with a giant stack of barrels along the bottom, still wants to tip over. All right then, we're going going to do this. This is the roll stabilizer out of my spy boat. If you remember how that worked, it's just pivots and a wheel. This doesn't really need to go anywhere specific. I just want to make sure that it can work. So the idea is that this will at least keep me level, but allow it to bob around a little bit. Oh, wow. It's quite interesting to see it fighting, you know? So the pivots are really not having a good time here. And they're letting it tilt off a little bit. Just moved the wheel back so I can sort of see what's going on. I think this is what I'm going to have to use. I can probably use some barrels and try and stabilize 
left and right a little bit. Like if I fill in this thing here, this big fin extension thing on the left side, that might be able to pull the left down, and level it out a bit more. Now I don't know what to do about the back and forwards, I might just have to chuck a whole bunch of barrels in the back. And that will bring the center of mass backwards and then I can use rocket boosters to remove all the mass and lift it back up. So I can kind of shift the mass around, the center of mass around, but I have to use weight blocks and barrels for that and then I have to use negative rocket boosters, negative fuel rocket boosters to just remove that mass from the total. So it's not as precise as it used to be. Getting this thing balanced is going to be the tricky part. But I think all of the decoration is pretty much there. There's going to be a couple of little things I want to add and some textures and things. But that's all stuff that can be added later. I think I'll sit on this for a while. Time to switch to another project. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.